like mm. I said, I had three records in my whole and three albums. Two of them wasn't two of them wasn't on Warner and one of them was. And I survived the blackball. Here I am this many years later. But now after I did Informer with Snow, when I did Informer was the time when I got dropped from Warner Brothers. Tying them wasn't paying my rent no more. I had a nice two-story house. I had to move out the two-story house to a one-bedroom apartment where the living room was cut in half to make a two-bedroom type of shit. Mm. And I went to Jamaica Avenue to go get some weed. And I ran into Snow's DJ, Prince. Prince said, I got a yo, I got a white boy from Canada do reggae. I said, yeah, all right, motherfucker, fuck off with that shit. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks later, Snow was in, in America, came to my house. We recorded Informer that minute. Boom. And this came at the time where I was getting kicked off of record labels, tying and wasn't paying my rent. And... Snow actually stole food to feed my family at this transition that I was fucked up at. Snow will forever be my brother. He was on charges in Canada. He came to America and was in the supermarket stealing shit to feed me and my family. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So I will forever be indebted to him. We saved each other's life. Because now... Let's say it's tonight. We finish recording in former tonight. He got to fly back to Canada and go to jail. So we finish in former tonight. He fly to Canada, go, and j go to jail. The fucking record came out. This motherfucker sitting in jail. They filmed the video and everything before he went to jail. He's sitting in jail with the hottest record in the whole fucking world. Mm. He went to jail on the motherfucking jail bus and came out in the limo and it changed our life. Changed our life so much that in 2019, Daddy Yankee remade it. Wow. It was the number one song on YouTube, man. It got two billion, almost three billion hits now. Nin 2019, it was the most watched video on YouTube. I'm I got publishing on that, so they're going to pay me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've got writers on that. Mm. It's 41 times platinum. I don't know what the fuck that means because I ain't never seen a nigga with 41 times platinum before. All right? I, out of all of our groups that we know, I ain't never seen a nigga get an ASCAP award. I got an ASCAP award. I had to point that shit on the camera and say, what the fuck is this? Because I never <laughs> seen one. <laughs> and we mm. in 2020. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And so all I look at that as... Remember why we say the energy that you put out is the energy that you get back? I've always put out good energy, and so I, I think that all the motherfuckers that I've helped along the way and did shit for to shit it on me, and I ain't got to mention that you shit it on me because you can see it within whatever yourself in your heart and know that you shit it on Shan. And so it's okay because now I'm just sitting back on my fucked up ass porch thing that I do my porch shows from. Chilling. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy Yankee. Thank you, Snow. Thank you, playing skills. And that's something that nobody can't take from me. And that's how come I survived that blackball. Because once I started making money on the other end, hiding in the background, you don't always have to be the one in the front to make the money. You can hide in the background and get paid and just shut the fuck up and move about your business. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to fucking be the nigga that got to be politically correct. None of that. You could just move around like you see me move around. I don't kiss no ass. I don't have to be politically correct. I say what I want on my Instagram. Short of the F word. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I be trying to tell people certain things like that, but you know. Oh, Ra, <laughs> but you want to know what the main important part of that is? The moral of that story is to make sure that your paperwork is right. Because imagine, I've ran into producers and said, you know, busters, let me see what your eyes can see. One of them cast that just made a beat, right? And say, yo, I made that, but I'm looking at him and he's like, he don't got nothing. So what'd you do? You just sell it to him? You know what I'm saying? Your paperwork wasn't right. And I'm not mad that you got fucked. 
you should have had your paperwork right. So the moral of that snow story is here you are in 2020 with a song that I made in 1993. And I still get what I'm supposed to get because my paperwork was right. Remember, like I said, as an artist, don't just want to be the artist. Make sure that you learn this music business. Facts. Thank you. <laughs>